So, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Glad you're here. Worship the Lord this morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Glad you're here. Worship the Lord this morning. Nice snowy day for those who wanted a white Christmas. We're still having a white Christmas. We continue to celebrate uh, Jesus' birth his physical birth and his spiritual birth into our hearts. And so we give him all, all the praise and all the glory as we can worship, worship him in spirit and truth this morning. So uh, let's pray. Father God, we give you all the praise and all the glory and thank you for allowing us to be here and worship you in freedom and in truth, in spirit and in truth. And we pray to God that uh, you would bless our time together and that you would uh, heal us and Forgive us of our sins and that you would lead us in the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, for glory we pray. Amen. We stand and, and greet the people around you and welcome this, them this morning. Uh, we'll have our congregational meeting next week uh, after church. And um, there's an uh, annual report there on the uh, stand outside the sanctuary that you can pick up. from Philippians 4, verses 4 through 9. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, or seen in me, put into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. This week I picked out songs that remind us to keep our eyes on Jesus. And I just thought with these verses, sometimes it's hard to rejoice. But we are called to rejoice always. And he even says rejoice twice. And then it also says to guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus, which reminds me to always keep my eyes focused on Jesus. So let's pray, and then we're going to sing Be Thou My Vision. Be uh -oh. gracious and heavenly Father, we're thankful that we can be here this morning. We're thankful for the reminders, Lord, to always keep you at the forefront of our minds and our hearts. Help us to always rejoice in the circumstances that we are in, Lord. Help us to be thankful and help us to always keep our eyes on you, Lord. You are good to us, Father. We aren't grateful enough for what you have done for us in our lives. So we pray, Lord, as we focus our hearts and minds on you this morning, that we can continue to rejoice. In your name we pray. Amen. Be thou my vision. Thank you. 
seven churches in the province of Asia. Grace and peace to you from he who, him who is, and who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priests, to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your word. Um, I thank you for the promises and the hope that it gives us, God. Pray that our worship is glorifying to you. Uh, may our hearts be open to you this morning. May they be softened by you um, to receive what you have for us. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. For the next song this morning, will you turn your eyes upon Jesus? <laughs> Yeah. 
The Bible says, "Do unto others as have you do unto do unto others as have you have you do unto you." Right? So we want to share, don't we? All right. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for sharing your love with us. That you hold back none of your gifts to us. That you fill us with your spirit. You treat us with mercy in a way we don't deserve. And you give us what we cannot earn. In these things, Father, we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Any joys or concerns you'd like to share this morning? Maybe you'd like me to share one with you, huh? <laughs> yes? Um, I was just going to give an update on Hunter. Um, he's doing fairly well. Oh, um, uh, his pain's under pretty good control, but just ask for continued prayers for um, just getting next through these next few weeks. Just, you know, it's just a long time to not be able to do other things. And um, they thank you for the prayers that, that they had, and they thank God for the, the, the process that they've gone through has been easier than maybe they thought it would be. So I think um, they're really glad that he got through the yeah. operation. Yeah. And uh, was, was safely through that. Yes, and I think the pain has been maybe better controlled than they thought at first. So that's great. So just that's great. Blessings there, but continued need. Great. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory, and we just thank you, and we praise you for the privilege of being here and worshiping you this morning. And we do thank our thankful Father for um, giving us your word and giving us Jesus so we know who you are and that we can identify your goodness and grace and your salvation. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for all the spiritual blessings that you give us in Christ. And I thank you, Father, for your grace in Hunter's life. And I pray, Father, that you would continue to heal him of this disease, continue to restore his muscle tone, continue, Father, to heal um, the pain that he's experienced. And we do thankful, our thankful, Father, for the procedure to... Uh, heal his hips and his ligaments. And I thank you, Father, for um, the joy of knowing that he got through the operation uh, safely. And I pray, Father, that and thank you for healing the pain in his life. I pray that we would continue to support Stephanie and Cody and the rest of their family. And I pray, Father God, that you would continue to Reveal your graciousness and your goodness to all of them. Just be with them and bless them. And Father, I thank you for the church. I thank you for uh, continued support of the church. I thank you for its continued faithfulness. And I pray to God that you would continue to lead us in the way of the Lord Jesus. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Luke's going to come and uh, read our scripture this morning. Would you open your Bibles with me this morning to Genesis chapter 1, verse 9? Chapter 1, verse 9. 
or I'm sorry, I said nine. I'm at 14. <laughs> Genesis 1, 14. Starting in verse 14, it says, And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years, and let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky and get to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate night from darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. People of God, this is the Word of God. Thanks be to God. So you guys doing okay this morning? Everybody watching on uh, Facebook, I want to welcome you and YouTube later and those in Fellowship Hall and I just want to hope you guys are doing okay today and uh, you continue to uh, keep the faith and keep uh, following Jesus. So uh, let's pray and we'll get into it. Father God, we pray that you would open up your word to us and that you would give us the spiritual truth of, this, of the spiritual heavenly blessings that you give it to us in Christ. And so, Father, uh, open up your word to us, open up our minds, open up our hearts to receive uh, your goodness and your grace in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's really a, a, a great privilege to... Um, share the gospel with you, to share the, the truth of the gospel with you. And um, this morning, um, it's very interesting, um, this passage of scripture is talking about the creation of the sun and of the moon and the stars, okay, which is, in a sense, different from the light that Jesus first um, created at the beginning when he created the, the foundation of the world. So this light that we have today, we have the light of Jesus, and we also have the light of the sun and the light of the moon and, um, and the stars. And he set them in there to create time, basically, to create time and seasons um, so that we would uh, know um, the blessings that God has bestowed upon us uh, every day of our lives. And so um, this morning, this passage of Scripture um, teaches us, in a sense, to focus on the things above, not on the things below. Meaning that we should th have our thoughts heavenly rather than earthly. We should be thinking about the Son of God, we should be thinking about His spiritual blessings, and we should be uh, practicing those in our lives. And I thought it was maybe ironic that we came to this passage of Scripture because uh, people, people have been asking, um, asking uh, me and asking some of you probably what in the world is going on in our world today. Um, and it seems completely different than what uh, we're used to. Um, and any time we get out of our comfort zone, we uh, wonder what's going on. Um, it's kind of ironic because I think we get so accustomed to the world that we don't want our life in the world to be upset. And, um, and in a sense, it's being uh, threatened. It's being um, challenged today in the world today. Um, and so people are saying, is God still sovereign? Well, yes, he is. Is God um, still sovereign in this crazy mixed up world? And the obvious answer um, is yes, he is. He's still in control. He's still orchestrating salvation history um, and the coming of Christ's return and the establishment of his kingdom according to his sovereign plan. And uh, Jesus said, um, I have told you these things that you may have peace. And so Jesus wants you to have peace. He doesn't want your hearts to be troubled. He says, in this world, you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. 
And then Jesus describes the signs of the close of the age. This is what our small group studied in, uh, a few weeks ago uh, in Matthew 24 and 25. Um, the signs of the close of the age, both for, very interesting, both for the Gentiles and for the Jews. Because I think in one sense, the, the signs of the time for the Gentiles are different from the signs of the times for the Jews that they will experience. And we are presently living in these times described in the Bible when we will see one world government, we will see the return of communism and the ex extreme persecution of Christians. We will see one world currency, famine uh, will continue, earthquakes, floods, and, not, and other natural disasters. Um, there'll be a time when you'll have the opportunity to choose between following Christ and receiving the mark of the beast. In other words, many of these things that Jesus told his apostles, John, through the vision of the seven seals, the seven trumpets, the seven bowls of God's wrath. These, these are uh, God's action against sin of the world. Those who have not been saved, and all this will happen until all the word, words of God are fulfilled. So, that sounds depressing. Um, so what should our response be? And how do we get ready for this happening, this tribulation? Well, our response should not be troubled or depressed or discouraged um, or any other Ds that we have, but be prepared and prepared by placing your faith in Christ. And I think this is so important because I think many people say they believe in God, but I don't know how many people really have faith in Christ. Many people say they believe in God. You know, well, the devil believes in God. Um, but how many people really have a, a, a genuine faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? It's really not something in our, in our world today to be apathetic about, uh, to just kind of write it off and saying, well, George is nuts today and he's kind of on his soapbox. Um, no, it's my job to prepare you um, for the coming persecution. If it doesn't come in our lifetime, uh, so be it. But you will be prepared to have faith in Christ because that's the most important thing. Nobody, nobody knows how long you live. Nobody knows that. Even doctors, when they have a terminal disease, say, well, they have six months or they have three months. Well, they don't know. They don't know. And none of us know. And so all of us, every person in the world, needs to be ready um, to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. So we need to prepare ourselves by placing our faith in Christ, setting our spiritual priorities straight, developing your convictions, taking a sober look, and get yourself, your family, and your grandchildren ready. This is um, so prevalent in my heart, and I think about it all the time. I just think about my grandchildren. And there he is in the front, the first of the three, one of the three is right there in the front row. How do I get him ready for the coming world? Well, it begins, I believe, and the Bible says, with repentance and trusting Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. That's, that's where it all starts. We are to live a life as citizens of heaven. So obvious and practical response is, have you faith in Jesus Christ? Are you a believer? Do you know God personally through Christ? Not that you know about God, but that you know God. Not the many blessings that he has allowed us to live in this country, or not for those. I say I love him because I am a Christian. I'm a believer in God, and not because of my lifestyle. We, we in America live uh, just a blessed lifestyle. I mean, we have the greatest health care in the world. We have all the luxuries of the world you can pretty, pretty much do anything you want um, which means that many people in the world today live a life without God they just 